In this video, we cover topics from chapter 7.4, all about applications of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we have two learning objectives for the series of two videos we're gonna see, and then there'll be a third video where we cover how to use a matrix to solve optimization problems. So our learning objective for this first video is to model population growth using an age transition matrix and an age distribution vector and uh, find a stable age distribution vector. So we're gonna see how we set up population models. Uh, and the second learning objective that you'll see in our second video is how to use a matrix equation to solve a system of first order linear differential equations. So in this first video, we're gonna talk about our population growth models. So to model population growth of a population with lifespan that we call L years, we partition the lifespan into what we call n equal size classes. So it could be five years, 10 years, one year, whatever um, age class you have. If you're talking about uh, like animals that have a short life, you might use months. So we've got our first age class. So that's gonna be from zero up to, but not including L over N. So we take our lifespan and divide it by N. And then uh, our second, each class has the closed brackets here. So it starts at value L over N and goes up to value two L over N, which is not included. That's why we have the open parentheses here. Uh, the ith age class is gonna be I minus one multiplied by L over N is the starting point included in the interval through the ending point being I multiplied by L over N all the way through our last class, the nth age class is gonna start at N minus one times L over N so like if n was eight, this would be seven L over n all the way through the ending, which would just be like eight L over eight or n L over n. So we just say we're gonna end it, uh, the lifespan with a open parentheses there. So the age distribution vector is X one through X n where each X i is the number of individuals in the ith age class. So we're gonna see how we can model population growth from age classes. PI is gonna be the probability that after L over N years, a member of the I age class will survive to become a member of the I plus one age class. Uh, and important to note that uh, the P's are between zero and one uh, because of probabilities. So of course, we wouldn't have negative probability. We wouldn't have probability over hundred uh, percent for all of the I's. And then the P nth value is zero. So that's because we're at the end of the lifespan. And presumably we're assuming the end of the lifespan is a max for whatever we're measuring. Um, it's not gonna be able to live past that. Uh, we're gonna let VI be the average number of offspring produced by a member of the ith age class. And then it's important to note that these are always gonna be positive values for the VIs. So they're always greater than or equal to zero. So positive or zero values. So these are the kinds of models that are used a lot in biology or um, as we study sometimes like organisms growing, things like that. So the age transition matrix, also known as the Leslie matrix, named after the mathematician who first developed this, is set up with all of the average offspring numbers in those classes in the top row of the matrix. And you might get to the later lifespan or age groups where uh, you have zeros here, that's fine. And then the diagonals through the first n minus one columns are these probabilities. And we're gonna see how with multiplication, uh, having the probabilities on the diagonals, when we multiply the matrices hits just the right spot. And so these are the probability that the member survives each of those age classes on the diagonal. If Xi is the age distribution vector at a specific time, then the age distribution vector ln years later is found by multiplying A times Xi. So we multiply using this uh, age transition matrix or what we know as the Leslie matrix. We are gonna take a look at two examples with mice and lizards. So let's start with the first example, looking at a population of mice. So in this example, 80% of a population of mice survives the first year. Of that 80%, 25% survives the second year. 
the maximum lifespan is three years. If you've ever had a pet mouse or guinea pig, you're familiar with that three year value. The number of offspring for each member of the population is three in the first year, six in the second, and three in the third year. The population now consists of 120 members in each age class. So we need to find how many members will there be in each class in one year and in two years. Okay, so we are setting up uh, our starting value, our solution vector, the xi here. This is 120 in each age class. This is our initial starting value. And then over here, matrix A is our age transition matrix or what we know as the Leslie matrix. So these values in the top row, the three, six, and three are the average offspring produced in each age class. So that was the three in the first year, six in the second year, and three in the third year. So this is average offspring each year in this case. So in this case, our age classes are just one year. And then on this n minus one diagonal here are the probabilities. So the 0.80 is the probability of survival year one. And that 0.25 is the probability survival year two. All right, let's take a look at how we're gonna do our calculations here. So we start to find the first year, we're gonna call X2, because X1 is our initial values, by multiplying A times X1. So you can verify in SIMPY, if you multiply A times X1, you get these values. So that's telling us that there are gonna be 1,440 mice between ages zero and one, 96 mice between ages one and two and 30 mice between ages two and three. So remember we're predicting how many in each age class after one year. So that's this first prediction. And the second row down here, the value for X3 will give us the prediction for year two. So year two down here, we're gonna call X3 because remember X1 is the initial year. You might like it better to call X1, X0. And then these would correspond with year one and year two in your indices, that's fine when you're calculating. So we find this by taking matrix A and multiplying it again by X2. You could also do matrix A squared by X1 if you prefer, it should be the same result. And so those values give us the number of mice in the age classes uh, for year two after two years. So we have 4,986 mice in the zero to one age class, 11, or 1,152 mice in the age class from one to two years and 24 mice in the age class from two to three years. So now we're gonna do a, another example. We're gonna look at lizards. So a lizard has a maximum lifespan of two years. We're told only 8% of lizards survive from their first year to their second year. So in our matrix here, each age class is a year and you can see my 8% is down here in what goes for the diagonal, but it's a two by two matrix. So it's just the uh, second row, first column. The average number of offspring for each member of the population is 1.5 in the first year and two in the second year. So those are the values here in our first row. Remember the number of offspring on average goes in the first row and then the probabilities go on the diagonal of the age distribution matrix or what's known as the Leslie matrix. So this is a pretty simple example because we've just got two years for these lizards. Remember averages can be uh, decimals or whole numbers. So that's why we've got the 1.5 here. Uh, no lizard on their own has 1.5 lizard babies, but uh, the average can be a decimal value 1.5. So these are the average births per year. And then the 0.08 is our probability of survival. Lizards don't have a very good probability here of surviving that first year. All right, so using SIMPY, I found the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. 
So uh, you can do eigenvalues, or you can also just go straight to eigenvectors because that gives you the eigenvalues there as well. Also, uh, negative one tenth, or you can call it negative point one, comes up once, and eight fifths, you can call it one point six of the decimal, comes up once. So the corresponding eigenvectors are uh, negative one point twenty five one and twenty zero. But would it make sense for negative values in terms of thinking about um, ages, right? Uh, and thinking about uh, the individuals in each age class because we're trying to find this stable age prediction vector. So it's not gonna make sense to have this negative eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector. So we are just gonna use the positive eigenvalue in our calculation over here. All right, so a negative eigenvalue and an eigenvalue of some positive and negative entries does not make sense here. X and AX equals lambda X must both have all non-negative entries because the entries represent the number of individuals in each age class. So we therefore are just gonna use the eigenvalue for eight fifths or 1.6, you can do it fraction or decimal. When we calculate the number of individuals in each class, that should be a whole number. So in our case, that eigenvalue uh, came out as a whole number. Just be aware sometimes if you're using um, a TI calculator or doing calculations by hand, you might get decimals like 19.9 or something here. And so remember, you may need to round up to whole numbers when you're doing calculations. So we're gonna use this eigenvector 20 and one as our X value, our initial value. And so we can check. So if we multiply AX, we get 32 and 1.6, and you can factor out the 1.6 to get the 20 and the one here in our vector. So we see the ratio of the age classes is stable at the first year relative to the second year, or it's a 20 to one ratio. And that makes some sense because in terms of uh, losing 8%, you could see that uh, there's a stable ratio in there when we factor out the eight fifths. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna take a look at how we solve first order linear differential equations using matrix equations.